Hello, I'm Debbie Davis, Chair of Leadership Lorain County. Welcome to today's presentation on ways to protect personal assets and support nonprofits through charitable giving. It's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Clint Galt. Hi, Debbie. Clint is a tax and wealth advisor at Wealth Health LLC, and I'm proud to serve with him on Leadership Lorain County's board. It's an honor as well. Clint focuses on uniquely providing tax and legally structured financial plans. All the fun stuff, Debbie. He is. <laughs> he is a fully registered financial advisor, as well as being an accredited investment fiduciary. In addition, he is an attorney licensed in the states of Florida and Ohio. Pretty exciting. And he personally prepares over 400 tax returns each year and oversees an additional 1,100. Thank God for coffee. Thank God. Okay, Clint is a graduate of Bowling Green State University and Michigan State University College of Law. In addition to serving as Leadership Lorain County's treasurer, Clint currently serves as commissioner on the Avon Landmark Preservation Commission, the president of the Avon French Creek Foundation, council member of the Avon Cleveland Clinic Community Advisory Council, Avon Library Committee, North Ridge Scenic Byway and Biking Walking Path Committee, and Satara Advisors Advisory Council. I would say he's all in for Lorain County. Yeah. He resides in Avon with his wife, Alyssa, and their four children, Samantha, Blake, Farah, and Astoria. On weekends, you can find him in his office or his home, enjoying time with his family, going for walks, playing with the kids outside, volunteering as a Sunday school teacher, and a youth football coach. All things involve coffee. <laughs> I love that about Clint. Well, thank you, Debbie. Well, let's welcome Clint as he shares his expert advice on three ways to protect personal assets and support nonprofits through charitable giving. Well, thank you, Debbie. It is an honor and a pleasure to be here today. Who doesn't love fireside chats? I feel like FDR. Woohoo! Uh, there are two things we can agree upon today, and I know in today's society it's very difficult to agree upon anything, but taxes are going up and no one loves to pay them. And so the question becomes, how do we plan for them, but also make an impact on the community that we love so much? So with that, we have the issue. In the 2017 Tax and Jobs Relief Act, a lot of really good things happened. They essentially doubled the standard deduction where we don't pay tax and instead of money money that we make, uh, they lower tax rates by three or 4% and a whole bunch of other really good things. But they also capped city, state, and property tax, they call SALT for short, um, at $10,000. And that created the problem because it became much more difficult to itemize and write off the money that we give to the charities that we love. And so hence the issue. But with that, we've got three solutions. The first solution is something referred to as the RMD QCD. Uh, strategy. The second one is called the Double Down Strategy. And the third is involving the Donor Advised Fund. And so the first again, RMD, QCD. So Clint, I have lots of questions on this one, Ooh. right? So what is an RMD? What is a QCD? Mm. Is Social Security taxable? And does my health insurance go down a lot when I hit 65? The pressure's on, the fire's burning, lots of questions. Well, uh, those are good questions, Debbie, I'm glad you asked. An RMD is a required minimum distribution. It seems really odd, but uh, when a person traditionally turned, uh, historically returned 70 and a half, the government said if you had any pre-tax money, um, you had to start taking out a set amount every year, and it was based off of the value of the account on December 31st of the year before, and this really creepy mortality table that the IRS has. Don't look up that on a Friday night. It'll depress you. Anyway, so it uh, starts at 3.5%, and so as an example, if a person had a million dollars in a traditional IRA account, then they have to take out $35,000. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, uh, they get a 50% penalty. 
I always say, who was in a bad mood that day? <laughs> you know, what about five? Couldn't we go with five? <laughs> no, we'll go with 50. Anyway, so pretty crazy. And so that has to come out 70 and a half. So the SECURE Act uh, was passed December 20, 2019. It actually moved the RMD age back to the age of 72, along with a bunch of other changes. But, um, but the point anyway is the RMD, uh, that required minimum distribution, um, that's how that operates and works. Uh, QCD is a qualified charitable distribution. Essentially, it involves writing a check directly from your, it has to be directly, directly from your traditional IRA account to that named charity, and then coding it on the tax return. And so that is the RMD QCD. The rules for that are, you gotta be uh, at least 70 and a half, um, you gotta have a traditional IRA, and then the money has to go directly to that uh, named charity. The points you made about social security taxability in Irma were also really important as well. Glad you brought those up. Social security, people don't realize, um, oftentimes, Ohio doesn't tax it. Uh, go Ohio, go Buckeyes. Now, Ohio doesn't tax it, but the Fed says we'll tax up to 85% of it. And so some people don't pay any tax at all on their social security benefits when they receive them. Other people pay tax on 85% of it, what they receive. The question of whether you do or don't pay tax on what you receive from social security is all dependent upon what other income you have on your return. And so Debbie, if we can limit the amount of other income on the tax return, we can also then limit how much we pay in tax on our social security. That's interesting. Um, the other point there is you brought up was Irma. Everybody's excited about turning 65. It's really pretty funny. People come into our office, they're like, I'm 65, and they're all excited, you know? And at first I was like, why are you so excited to be 65? And they said, because my health insurance premiums went down substantially. Well, it is true. Health insurance does go down a lot when you turn 65 with Medicare. However, the amount of uh, uh, what you have to pay for your Medicare premiums is also based off your overall income. And so people don't realize that. They go back two years, see what your income was, and if you have above a threshold of income, you pay an additional premium uh, on what those health insurance premiums would be, and you pay more uh, for each person, husband or wife. And so, and in fact, if you over buy a penny, you can pay 40% more in health insurance premium. So it's pretty crazy. Wow. So, uh, the beauty of RMD QCD, again, that first strategy, is that uh, it, it allows you to write checks directly from your traditional IRA account to that named charity, and in doing so, uh, it serves as an above the line deduction, and that limits your social security taxability and any increases that you may have in Medicare premiums. It's so, really exciting stuff. So it sounds like, Clint, it's good for me personally, and it also is going to benefit whatever nonprofit is in my heart. Yeah, no one hates tax, no, no one loves paying more in taxes, and everybody, if we, there's a way in which we can find a way to make an impact in the communities that we love, let's do it. I agree. Thanks, great tip. Well, my pleasure. So the next solution is the double down strategy. The double down strategy is pretty simple. It essentially just involves rotating the years in which you give money to those named charities. Can you walk us through an example of that, Clint? Well, as a matter of fact, I can, Debbie. So let's take an example of a 65-year-old uh, married couple here in, say, Avon, Ohio. Go Eagles. Um, $125,000, say, in non-wage income, so they're retired. A $400,000 home. $50,000 mortgage, and this is a couple who gives annually to charities. So the details on this, um, they're retired in Avon, so they don't have any city taxes, no read up. Um, uh, state taxes are paying about $3,500. Property tax is about $9,000. And uh, mortgage interest, say about $2,000 on that $50,000 loan. And they're a very uh, nice couple who give $15,000 a year to charities. Well. In this example, remember our, our uh, analysis before about the 2017 Tax and Jobs Relief Act. It capped city, state, and property tax to $10,000. So even though they have, you know, there's no city taxes in this example because they're retired, but the, when you count up the state and the property taxes, you get uh, $12,500, but you don't get to actually count $12,500, you only get to count $10,000 because they're capped, remember? And so we have the 10,000, adding 2,000 for mortgage interest, we're at 12, 
add in the gifts of charity at $15,000, we're $27,000. The issue is that it doesn't get above their standard deduction for the 2021 tax year of $27,800. So even though they give $15,000 to charities, um, they won't have an itemized deduction or tax return this year. They'll take the same deduction. So instead of doing that, if they just rotated years and say gave 30,000 this year to a charity and none the next year, then they would essentially go above and itemize by about $14,000 this year, saving them 3,000 plus in taxes. And then they would take the same deduction the following year, which is already pretty much what it would have been before if they didn't give any money to charity. And so people would say, well, what does it matter? Well, that additional three or $4,000 can go to charities. Yeah. It makes an impact. That's really innovative. Well, thank you. We give, uh, we give coffee the credit. So now that is uh, strategy uh, number two, the, uh, the double down strategy, which essentially is just rotating years in which we're giving money to charities. Uh, the third strategy is, uh, is using a donor advice fund. So Clint, what is a donor advised fund? And just as you did in the second solution, can you provide us an example here? Sure, yeah, donor advised fund is basically a, a charity, but you haven't really named the end uh, beneficial uh, cause yet. And so an example would be maybe a person who could, who could benefit from this is maybe a person who has a high income, uh, doesn't have to, but maybe they have a high income and they want to lower down their tax bill for the year, they make a large check to that named charity, um, but they don't know what charity's going to go to yet, so it goes to donor advice fund, and they can give the money to charities over time. Or a person who maybe has some highly appreciated stock, say they put $100,000 in a growth investment, like Growth Fund of America or others, um, and they put 100000 in there. Let's just say that over the last uh, you know, decade, the money grew to be two hundred dollars or 300000 well, they can actually move the entire, say, $300,000 directly over to the donor advice fund and not pay tax on that $100,000, 200000 in gains, get the deduction on the tax return for the fact that that money was uh, given to the charity, but then they can decide later what charity or charities get those funds. And so they're not paying tax then on the gains from the 100000 they put in to the, say, $300,000 value now, um, and they get the deduction, but then actually get to space out when and what years and how and what charities actually get it. And so it's really pretty cool stuff. That is really interesting, Clint. So on that one, if you have a giving heart, mm -hmm. you can create this donor advised funds and then determine at a later date on how you want to distribute those funds to different nonprofits? Completely, yes. Yeah. So you can say, you know what, I know that in my lifetime I want to give uh, a certain amount of money to charities. I just don't know what charities yet. Or maybe, uh, say you have a passion for leadership in County, county, but you want to give that money out in annual installments. Well, you can get a deduction right now and maybe even time it with something else. Like many people that we serve do things like we'll do a partial Roth conversion. You can convert pre-tax money from a traditional IRA account to a Roth IRA account, have it start to grow tax-free at today's lower tax rates, and then make a big gift to the donor advised fund at the same time and eliminate that big tax burden, and then have that donor advised fund be the giving source for the charitable causes for the rest of your entire life. That's really innovative also. Well, thank you. So, Again, the three overall strategies here, the RMD QCD, the double down strategy, and the donor advised fund strategy. So really, really exciting stuff. I would say, you know, taxes may be the most boring thing in the world, but when you can plan with them, it actually makes it pretty exciting. Great information, Clint. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And on that note, um, everybody's personal circumstances are different. And so we would encourage you to reach out to your uh, you know, tax, legal, or financial team to assist you with any questions you have on this. Uh, if you don't have anybody to help you with this, we're glad to answer any questions and, and um, can give you our contact information. But either way, uh, we just wanted to help out and, and, and encourage you to make an impact in the community that you love. Thanks for all you do, Clint. Thank you, Debbie. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Debbie Davis. And I'm Clint Gull. And we're with the board of Leadership Lorraine County. Go team. Go team.
And if you'd like to tune in and learn more about ways to make an impact on your community and also uh, uh, save money in taxes, click on the link below.